Hello, and you picked the right video to watch, my fram. There is so much juiciness here. A little something for everyone. We've got an amazing story time, the truth, the drama between me and Taryn Manning of Orange is the New Black, The Beef Explained. Also, I've got some YouTube drama talking about several YouTubers. And I've got your traditional daily recap video about your mainstream celebrities, including a lot of Ariana Grande drama to get to. And yes, there's still more drama and some major drama specifically for Pete Davidson. I will get to everything, but I'm going to start off with Taryn Manning. And this really surprised me that so many people were asking me to spill the tea and explain. Let me drink some tea before I get to that. So, as I mentioned, Taryn Manning is one of the stars of Orange is the New Black, which they just announced their upcoming season will be the last. I have known her for well over a decade and I've blocked her on every social media platform there is. Despite that, she just sent me a friend request on my personal Facebook page, which I denied and then marked as spam. And for those of you who are curious, I know it's her real page. It lists all of our mutual friends when she sent me the initial friend request. So some people just don't get the hint. If I blocked you on Twitter and I blocked you on freaking Instagram, I don't want to be your friend on Facebook. Okay, Taryn Manning. So what happened with her is complicated. What happened with her is litigious, and that's why I need to be very careful with how I word myself. But I would say that I was a friend of hers. We would text, we would email. She would come over to my house and play me music from when she was in her band with her brother to her solo music, which I was a big supporter of. She's very talented. That, yeah, that's just letting it breathe. <laughs> she's a talented actress. She's a talented songwriter and singer. She's also got a lot of issues. I don't want to get into any of the issues because I don't want to get sued. But I will say that somewhere along the way, I was doing her a favor. I did her a solid. I helped her out in a major way and then she got what I perceived to be full-on crazy. I'm not saying she's crazy. I'm just giving an opinion. Uh, I mean, is that, can I say that legally that I think she got crazy on me? I think, I'm not even saying she got crazy. I perceived it to be, all right? My perception may have been wrong. I'm trying to be very legally careful here. So that was the beginning of the end of our relationship, friendship. And then after that, along the road, she got seemingly crazy again when she threatened to sue me over something that I had written, which was ridiculous and it wasn't anything inaccurate or wrong or defamatory or anything like that. And and basically that's why. Like, pfft, you threatened to sue me. You got all cray cray on me. I'm gonna block you everywhere. I don't need you in my life. I don't want you anywhere near me. And after all of that, she sent me a friend request on my personal Facebook page. In similar news, story time-ish. I made a video last week about me and Christina Aguilera and Lady Gaga, and some people are telling me that I shouldn't discuss Christina Aguilera in any way because of our past. That makes no sense to me. I was reporting that ticket sales for Christina's new tour were not spectacular. And people were calling me a liar and this and that and leave her alone and all of these things. I mean, hello, it's my job to report on celebrity news. I love talking about tours that are struggling. Talking about a tour that's struggling is way more exciting than talking about a tour that's selling out. And hey, 
I made a video last week as well, I believe it was last week, or maybe repeatedly I've spoken about Drake's new tour and the struggles he's had with that. So I talk about everyone and their tours and I'm a big Drake fan. So after people were calling me out incorrectly, I did what? I showed them some receipts, my friends. I showed them the ticket map for her concert tonight tonight in Chicago, and there were still plenty of tickets available up close. The expensive tickets. And there were some available back as well for the cheapo seats. And I even posted a receipt of the StubHub from last night where tickets were being sold for as little as $14. That's it. I'm just reporting the facts. Lemon glazed loaf. This is so good. This one's really grown on me. I think the problem that I had when I had this Tazo lemon glazed loaf for the first time is I started drinking it without letting it seep long enough. I now that am a tea connoisseur have learned that you need to let your tea seep, stew, cook for at least five minutes, for about five minutes. Then you really get the flavors. Right, on to my YouTube segment. If this isn't your bag, fast forward through my YouTube segment and go towards the Ariana and others. Shane Dawson, I'm catching up on the YouTube drama. I'm not a YouTube drama channel, even though I enjoy the YouTube drama and I occasionally engage in it. I thankfully watched part one and then was done with the Shane Dawson series. I hope that in the future, Shane makes smaller sized content that's more easily digestible, I can commit to 20 minutes of watching a YouTube video. Longer than that, I don't want to get behind it. It's just, I'm too busy for it. Even at nighttime, I'm still working. I hustle hard. So Shane announced that he is taking a break, a long break. You may not have heard this if you're a Shane fan, but it's because it's hard to keep up with people across multi platforms and on different social media apps. But Shane on Twitter said, quote, I probably won't be uploading for a few months after this series is over. That's a bummer. I think that Shane He's raised the bar for himself, but he needs to lower it a little and just make content for fun. Make whatever content he wants. Not everything needs to be a big epic series, a multi-part thing. Make one-offs again. Just do what makes you happy. Do it for you. Don't do it for the views. Don't do it for analytics or anything other than what you want to do, which I think he's been doing. But now the success that he's had in 2018 has translated to pressure and you can read between the lines and that pressure is getting to him. Take the time off, hopefully not a few months, maybe just a few weeks, three to four, <laughs> and come back and just have fun and do whatever you want. I also saw this article about Grayson Dolan of the Hottie Dolan twins denying that he's dating James Charles. I never thought he was dating James Charles. And trust me, I like to keep tabs on those Dolan twins. Is Cameron Dallas dating anybody? Let me know in the comment section down below. <laughs> that was not a shady comment. I'm actually very serious. Is Cameron Dallas dating anybody? <laughs> not a shady comment. Also, I found out that Miranda Sings is launching her own lipstick line. Congratulations on, on that. This may blow your mind because it blew my mind, but her name is spelled Colleen, but I believe her real name, Miranda Sings' real name, but I believe that you, the way that she pronounces it and her friends that pronounce it is Colleen, not Colleen, Colleen. All right, speaking of Miranda Sings, she is good friends with Ariana Grande. You may not know that, but they are. They've been friends for over a decade. 
And it seems that Ariana's former fiance, Pete Davidson, is not handling their split well. He had a comedy show at Temple University that he canceled. I am a show person, and so is Ariana, but she's not really anymore. Ariana, you may not know this, Ariana got her start on Broadway. There's this old saying in Broadway, the show must go on. Show people are the hardest working people in show business. Eight shows a week, only two weeks of vacation a year. The hustle doesn't stop there. They're always doing benefits and auditions and this and media. It's, it's a full-time, almost 24-7 job as well, but they're doing what they love. I would not have canceled my show, but you know, he's a sensitive type and has many issues that he's dealing with. And if that's what he needs to do to focus on his well-being, then that's what he should do. As for Ariana, I mentioned yesterday that she had missed the dress rehearsal for Wicked. Thankfully, she made it to the dress rehearsal yesterday or today. She finally made it to a dress rehearsal for the NBC Wicked telecast. And she was spotted with a band-aid covering, I forget which finger it was, one of these two fingers. She was spotted with a band-aid covering her Pete tattoo. I might guess that she started to get it lasered off or she just wanted to cover it. But I think she probably got it lasered off and didn't want everybody to know that she got it lasered off. I'm not sure. Either way, when the tattoos start coming off, there's no getting back together, I think. And also, fans have been flooding Cassie David's Instagram, asking her, telling her not to get back together with Pete Davidson. Yeah, some of y'all are way too invested in these people. I mean, I'm invested in these people, but I'm not gonna tell that to her on her Instagram. I might, I might tweet that, okay? I might Facebook that, but I'm not gonna comment that on her Instagram. That's one step too much. I've said this on the podcast before. Everybody just needs to listen to my podcast to know how to behave at all times. <laughs> the world, according to Perez Hilton. All right, from Ariana to another pop diva, Taylor Swift. Y'all, woke Taylor is here to save America. She has gotten political again. She posted on her Instagram this morning, alerting voters in Tennessee that they can vote early and giving them information on how they could vote early. I love this. I love it. Oh, it makes me so happy to see her using her powers for good. All right, on to some relationship news. After 10 years together, Diddy and Cassie have called it quits. I want to check how old she is. I mean, she's, I would guess 31. Let me guess. Cassie is... 32. I'm good, yo. And she just turned 32 in August. So she was 31 until very recently. Some would say she wasted her youth with Diddy. It sucks that you're together for 10 years and then it doesn't happen and she didn't even get a ring. She didn't get married. He probably dumped her before the 10 year mark actually, because after 10 years, you're common law husband and wife. Isn't that the law? Just sucks for both it sucks for both of them although he's moved on already he's moved on to some 26 year old model she didn't even get a baby either if you just dated somebody in your peak years for that long does it feel like those years were a waste i don't know i said that at the beginning but i i would almost feel that way like i i need to know why they broke up that, and why they couldn't make it work. I, I need to get those two on the phone. <laughs> All right, a reminder, as always, I will have the links to everything I talk about down below in the description so you can read, see, and hear more in detail on any one particular story that may tickle your pickle. Speaking of relationships, I had this thought in my mind 
about Meghan Markle that was triggered by the whole Cassie and Diddy split. I am wishing the best for Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, but let's say they get divorced. If she wants to move back to America with her child, a British royal, would she be able to? I wonder what the law is. I mean, would it be a 50-50 split? Would she, would she even be able to bring her child to America 50% of the time or during the school year and then let the baby or the, the you know, five-year-old, however long, however old the kid is, be, be in the UK for winter break, spring break, and summers? I hope it works out for them. We've seen, you know, the royal family is like any other family. There have been divorces there from Princess Diana to... Fergie and others and more couples news I almost drank the tea bag Kim Kardashian and Kanye West continue their trip in Uganda and I talk about this specific topic on my podcast this week they took their daughter north out of school if that were my kid I'm not I'm not taking my kid out of school where he's learning now he's in kindergarten I'm not taking him out of school for nothing. I had even told my sister if she had a destination wedding, I wasn't taking my kid out of school for her wedding. He'd fly out on a Friday night, get there overnight for a Saturday wedding, but he wasn't gonna miss a day of school for her wedding. I'm that kind of parent. Onto some TV news, Roseanne Barr says that killing off her character with an overdose is grim and morbid. This is the best show anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Just giving myself some applause and a pat on the back. And you too for watching. Also, speaking of the Roseanne spinoff, The Connors, it debuted to 35% fewer viewers than The Return of Roseanne did when that came back on the air. Was it earlier this year? Was it late last year? I don't remember exactly when, but within the last 12 months. But 35% down is about where the Roseanne revival ended up at last season, so that's not too bad. All right, more TV news. Kim Zolciak is denying that she ever photoshopped her young children's photos saying people are blanking sick get the blank out of here no post was taken down and no photo has been nor will ever be edited of my children i will no longer stand for this bull blank it sure looked that way to me also ronnie ortiz's girlfriend jen blames jersey shore for all of their problems specifically stating stating it is the root of their problems. I mean, I believe in the reality show curse, but this woman and this guy would have had problems regardless of reality TV, all right? Speaking of reality TV, a judge has accused Bethany Frankel's ex, Jason Hoppe, of exploiting her other ex, Dennis Shields' death. He died of an overdose. He, Jason Hoppy, wanted the mother of his child to get random drug testing. The judge denied, saying there was a tragedy, which I think you're trying to exploit to embarrass Miss Frankel. Boom, put him in his place as he should. Bethany Frankel's ex sounds about as awful as Mel B's ex. And I'll get to Mel B later on in the show, which I want to wrap up because I want to get to, I want to, I don't want to go longer than 20 minutes. <sighs> Tara Reid is denying getting kicked off a flight. She says that she left voluntarily from that Delta plane because the flight attendants told her to put her therapy dog in the overhead bin and that she had paperwork and had the dog pre-approved, but she was refusing to put the dog in the overhead bin. Would Delta really tell somebody to put their dog in the overhead bin? That seems highly unlikely to me. I'm not saying that Tara Reid's a liar, but... I mean, have you guys ever heard of an airline really asking a person to put their dog in the overhead bin? I mentioned Mel B briefly. She is being investigated after allegedly hitting a model at a fashion show, a male model. 
the way I read it, it sounds like she was joking, but still not cool if she did it even in a joking way. Getting that straight. Read more details on my website. On to the last two tidbits, and I'm close to the 20 minute mark. Um, Lena Dunham had to remove an ovary about a year after having her cervix and uterus removed. This poor woman has had so many surgeries and health problems. I am exhausted for her. Sending Lena Dunham all of the healing and positive vibes. And I wanna end things on a happy note. According to reports, Rob Kardashian has reportedly lost between 30 to 50 pounds. Yes! Healthier is happier. I know how hard that has been for him, but he did it. Congratulations, Rob. You can do it too. If you guys want to know, I've shared a ton of tips over on my The Perez Hilton YouTube channel. Go ahead and check them out. And Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, leave a comment, share, all the links to my socials down below. You're awesome.